Welcome to episode four of the Baggers Chats. How are we all? Um, yeah. Yeah. As you yeah, can tell, yeah. it's a little That's bit of a that. different tone this week because uh, obviously we all saw the scores on the weekend. Blue Baggers, unfortunately, going down to the West Coast Eagles, 10 goals, 13, 73 to West Coast Eagles, 14 goals, 11, 95. Not much more else to say there, is there? Uh, all right. just, just the episode there. No, we're not in the episode there. We are. Uh, all, all I can say is, all I can say we're is, flat. I should have enjoyed that Hawthorne win more. <laughs> because we're not going to say a win more. Yes. What did we yeah. win against Hawthorne? We won what? I think it was twenty-three points. points. Yeah, twenty-three uh, points. Oh, but boy. seriously, like, what is the problem? What the fuck? Is the problem? Lots. There are so many facts. I think we're trying lots, to keep lots. it at thirty minutes. I don't think we can name all the problems within thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, a joke. It's it's, <laughs> it's so hard. Not right. like, oh, it's just like you want these guys to fucking do well, but they can't do well. well like last but, um, week on the fan cams, because shout out to Blue Bro with Terry, but um, I reckon yeah. that was the first time that I've watched it live from the start to the very end, because sometimes like. There's times yeah. like, oh yeah, I can't really yeah. watch it. Yeah, I, I, watched, say, I, watched I, it watched, I watched that full, I think it was an hour and a half. I watched that from yep, start same. to finish. And anyone who was walking past me in the house, I was just like zoned out because I was that fucking into it. Because I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't stop watching. Like Terry a couple of weeks ago, he couldn't get off. I couldn't stop watching. It was that bad. Yeah. It was Agreed. that bad. And I just like, I think like, I think Mark was the only guy who actually got bloody angry, but everyone else was actually on the verge of crying, and he was that bad. I, like, I think it, I think it's a little sad that we're we're here talking about fan camps instead of the actual game. Like that's that's the point we're at. But then exactly right because we actually get the reactions from our fans to see how much this actually means, and it doesn't give a fuck. It's like it doesn't mean anything to these players. Well, that's, that's right. a big call. That's a big call. Like, but, I, I think I think it does matter. Like, I'm sure Cripper right now is feeling so embarrassed. Like, I'm I'm tell, mark my word. Like, every single player that goes out to to like represent this jumper should be full on. Like, there's too many passengers. Simple as that. Yeah. Pull the jumper out. Pull pull the Has jumper out. Tell us what it says. Tell us yeah. what it says. Let's go, Mitchie Boy. This is the uh, are the are the out there. Is, that a, right? is that a Nike yeah. tick? Is that a Nike tick? That Nike tick. Might have to blur that in the video. Photoshop that out, man. I will read out <laughs> what it says on the very bottom of the jumper, shall we? Okay, so this is the 2019 yes. jumper. Okay, and I assume that this yep. is still on the jumper as well. When you put on this jersey, the monogram on the front is more important than the number on the back. Now, I think there are two. I don't think there are too many selfish players. But I don't know what the actual problem is if they're not because we all know that these guys are connected off the field. These guys are best. Have mates. to be. Have to be. Us, they have to be. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think I've had enough talking, boys. I reckon you should start to take over because I, I don't know what else to say. I really don't. Joyful, Sammy. Sammy. What's that? Do you want me to go? Um. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, it was pretty disappointing. Um. Obviously, Harry going down didn't help, but you can't blame that when they had. <sighs> You know, five or six of their so best, four or five of their best players out. Like, like we can't use that as, as an excuse because they can use the same excuse. So I don't think there is any yeah, excuses. No excuses. Um, Essendon, yep. Essendon beat them with less injuries in Perth. We can't beat their reserve side. Um, it's yeah, away from Perth. It's that was a joke. That was an absolute disgrace. Um, yeah, there's a few things that good boy was down to. Um, yeah, I don't know. But outside of the top four or five players, there is, a, as you said, there's a lot of passengers. Um, with Richmond, after besides, you know, Dusty, they've got a team full of players that just work together. Um, we just, yeah, didn't work for each other. And it was it's dismal no cohesion It's absolutely right. disgrace. Yeah. yeah, you can see yeah. when Melbourne play, they've got guys, you know, playing for each other. Well, look at Brayshaw. He yeah, had 13. That's it. I think one, I think against the Dogs, he had only like 13 or 15 touches or something. But he was still one of the better players on the ground. It's because of the impact. They had a few players that are like the champions, like you know, like Petrarca, you know, yep. Oliver, you know, a few of them guys. 
Maxi gone. But then outside of that, even the, the you know, the players aren't necessarily champions or star players. They just still all work together. And if one goes, you know, I think it's Richmond when they won the grand final, like the amount of injuries they have. Like they just, there's, but then again, that's also depth as well. There's players, one player goes down, it's filled, you know, it's filled pretty easily. We don't have, we can't fill one side of the line too. So, um, yeah, they just don't work. They're not working well together and it's, yeah, luckily we've got the bye next week and Harry yes. what, should be back by the Friday <laughs> after. So we should, shouldn't miss a game, I don't think. And, but, and yeah. Newey as well. Uh, yeah, and Newey, and Newey as well, seemed, yeah. That seemed a lot worse than and, week's injury. I don't know. Well, what are we, what's her thought about it? Well, what's, what's her thought on that? What he did? I was just reading. I don't I, think I, I really, I like the effort. But I, I like the effort. Like, it was Nick Rio has done similar things. But... I mean, it's more effort than probably 15 other blokes gave. Yeah, he showed a bit game. of heart. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So out of... I mean, it's, ups- yeah, it's upsetting what happened, but it is good seeing someone, sh- yeah, as you said, show a bit of heart, a bit of effort. Um, instead of, you know, like well, there was... I can't remember the exact moment, but there was one moment there where Saad came in and he could have like just came in with a big, strong tackle and he sort of stopped and like we don't, we, we've stopped and propped and sort of didn't actually commit to the tackle. And it happened a few times throughout the day. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it issues, tackle, yeah. most players did that. Tackle numbers terrible. Like, shocking. yeah, like highest ta- our highest not our, playing a our player player with the highest tackle is Mark Pittnett. Pitto, Pitto is, yeah, is, is a ruckman. You know what I mean? With, with six, and then you got a few guys with four, three, two, and then you're into single figures, and then there's half a dozen players that didn't lay a tackle. Like the past two weeks, Cripp has been leading our tackle. Five. He got one yesterday. What is going? Yeah, and Yo, Yo, and Redden combined for what sixteen? I think it was between the two of them. And Redden ten, Yo seven. I, so I, I'm going to make a point here. Seven, I yeah. think every year, any game we verse, I don't give a fuck who we verse, how many players they've got out. It's about how we play. Exactly. But we were talking about all week. Yeah, exactly. Oh, West Coast don't have Kennedy. We should win. People were laughing, thinking, imagine if we lose this game. I oh, know. And then they do it. Why are we oh, laughing at what they do? Why are we laughing at it? should be laughing at our own club. Exactly. They're all, the, every other club 100%. is laughing at us. Every other club. All right. So, boys, uh, I know that weren't, there weren't many, many uh, great moments from the game, but Daffy, start us off with our best moment or best player, please. I, I don't know. The best player is Sam Walsh. It's the same thing every week. Yep. Um, the whole club's letting him down. His teammates are letting him down. Um, president's letting him down, the board's letting him down. Um, he does what he can. Best play of the game, Jesus Christ. Was there any? Sam Walsh's goal, <laughs> yeah. That, that's, no, that's what I was gonna say. Same yeah. bloke. There was one instance in the game where I stood upright, I was just yelling at the team the whole game. There was one if it where he tackled someone or bumped someone down a half back, right. And then we get it up our forward line. Who's the next bloke to bump? It's him again. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. Goal. One guy. What that makes sense? I, I, That's I our biggest problem. 18 blokes do that. You win the fucking game. But this guy, this, like, this guy is 20 years old, boys. He's my age. 20 years Younger old. Younger than me. Like, he's 20 and he's the best footballer at the Carlton Football Club. It doesn't make sense. It does we, not make sense. Long I, don't mind by quite a margin as well. I don't mind if he is the best player, but we can't be playing like team performances like that, right? Do you yeah. get me? Like, yeah. if, I don't mind. They're not a team player. at the moment. Yeah, exactly. I, I just yeah. don't. I mean, I don't think I've heard this before that a 20 year old is the best player at a football club. I don't think I've heard that before. I seriously can say that. I don't think the last time I've heard that. A 20 year old, it's just. Like, we, we all know that Walsh... I mean, I, mean, I guess Gold Coast had an 18-year-old last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, like, I, mean, like, I mean, it's awesome that we like, we had the privilege of seeing Walsh go out there every single week representing the, like, the jumper. But he's the only guy who does it. And I don't understand how... I don't know. Because, I mean, like... I reckon, question. I reckon Cripps is an absolute star and still goes out there every single week to back. But he shouldn't be yeah. the only one. He's a captain, yes, yeah. but he shouldn't be the only one going out there. Sam, sorry, you no. go. From what I from what I can see, our club off field, like our board and whatever, must be the 
best bullshit artist ever because how do they get players why do they have players actually wanting to come play for us like they can they can sell the their story of we're rebuilding we're coming they know we're coming all that sort of good stuff they're obviously that good at selling that because it, it doesn't actually happen no. but we're getting still getting players like martin and uh you know there's talks about obviously you know shield and all that coming to colton obviously never happened but all there's all these talks about these players wanting to come to colton and then obviously some coming to colton um some big fish uh, some of which haven't eventuated, but why are we a destination club? Like we must be, we must talk a lot of shit because we're we've done nothing for since I've been alive. You know, besides obviously the elimination final, that's probably the best thing I've seen. But I don't know. I think I think, like I think that think might be coming to an end now. Yeah, yeah. People are starting to see through what I think. Yeah. Starting to see what are they? Yeah, you know, I do agree. With, really... I percent agree with everything you've said. Yeah. yeah, that is that uh, is pretty spot on. Jesus Christ, that that hurts. How many years has Cripps been there for now? Oh yeah, he's drafted twenty end of twenty thirteen, so twenty fourteen, twenty thirteen, fourteen, seven years, six years, whatever. Like, why would he want to stay? You know, he's getting to the latter part, latter part of his career now. Why wouldn't he go back home? To, you know, play for West Coast, win a you know, win a premiership. You know, why wouldn't he? You know, why do people want to stay for this at this club? Mm. Like it's players like that that you kind of just want it. Like they, like they deserve to win a premiership. Like they, that yeah. they actually deserve it. Yeah. Walshy, they deserve it. Mackay, they deserve it. Mm. Charlie Kerno, even if he's fit, they all deserve it. Yeah, well. So yeah, it's a- Kerno's lucky too. I reckon. Like yeah, mm. Charlie. Probably we gave him a chance. We only ended up with him because of that drink driving thing and all that. So, but yeah. But then but, what yeah, I was yeah, I, I, I agree. Oh, you, you go, go mate. Duff. You go, Duff. No, I agree with your point. Like, why would they stay? But um, these guys are human, man. I think they've got a bit of like, loyalty about them, I think. Um, like, why have most players stayed? Why has Murphy stayed? Yeah, we, well, you know, they, a lot of them don't, though, as well. Otherwise, you know, Williams would have stayed the amount of shit where he was. career, Murphy. Mm. Like, I'm sure the amount of times he's gotten, like, you know, death threats. You got offered to go to Geelong, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. yeah, have to go to Geelong. Well, they won the premiership recently, like. Should have gone. Probably should have went. Probably should have went. But to be fair, how old is he now? They'll probably still be interested in him. Yeah, hopefully he can. Yeah, he's just hitting his prime for Geelong. Yes, he has. Yeah, exactly right. right. <laughs> but um, yeah. But then what I was about to touch on before is about what you said, Sam, about how how we get these kinds of players to the door. And I think the main thing is it's it's the it's the oh this is where we're going. So come with us. Mm. Like it's the it's it's the fantasy dream. Oh yeah, two years time, we'll win a premiership. We'll be up there. Just come. But I think it was Daff or Jack that said like they're seeing through that now. Like it's been you know oh, twenty years yeah. of constant shit. Like they're gonna see through. Yeah. More really. Um, you know they're gonna see they're gonna see through that now and go. You know they're not really going anywhere. Like yeah, but- especially especially imagine if Cripps left them. If Cripps or Harry left, them, you know how fucked we are now. Imagine if one or both of them players left. That, that there's no chance you'd get. Anyone would be would be bottom two for the next five years. Yeah, yeah. Until you find them again, and then it will just be the same story, same thing happening and happening mm-hmm. again. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yep. You just got to be able to. I think Melbourne have done it well. I know they've been terrible for a long, long time before this, but yeah, this year they've been able to. Well, the last even twenty eighteen, they, they were able to break the cycle of being mm. mediocre, and then they yeah. brought guys through the door. You know, Stephen May, Lever, those types of players. If they didn't break that cycle, I think we're going to struggle at breaking it if we keep this up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I any- personally think we do have, you know, maybe another couple of players would be good, but I think we do have some good players. Like, you know, one on each, one on each side of the ground. We've got, you know, we've got one of the best defenders, one of the best midfielders, one, you know, one of the best, if not the best forwards. But they're just, as I guess we've said a few times, they just don't work together. That's the issue. Like, you know, you can imagine Charlie, you know, we're always imagining, can you imagine, but Charlie and Harry, you know, in a forward line with Walsh and Cripper delivering to them, Weedering we- and, you know, Jones out back. Like, it, it, sh- it sounds good, but it, why isn't it? It should be good, really. Yeah. And that, that, that changes the thought of, is it really the players? Do you, yeah, exactly. It's the coaches. Like, how can you not coach a group of players like that? Not our coaching panel is atrocious. Exactly. I don't think it's David Teague necessarily. It, it's not Teague. It's not Teague. No. I don't think it's it's the, that's the thing. They're always they're always worried about changing the head coach. 
Yeah, but they're not, you know, why aren't they looking at Barker? Why aren't they looking at all the other coaches as well? It's more than just one coach, you know what I mean? Like, there's one That's main the head point, coach, yeah. but there's forwards coach, stoppage. There's all these different coaches that you don't really see or hear about that, from what we can tell, aren't doing their job. You're exactly yeah, right. yeah, like, spot, exactly. like, like, there's no other way of saying it because that is spot on. Because it, John Barker's been here for how long? What, 12 years? Is it? Hmm. Too, too long. Too long. <laughs> like, mate, but we were speaking about it last night on our chat. Um, like, I mean, you'd think that even at the end of 2018 season, probably not, but at the 2019 season when Teague t- took over, wouldn't the logical thing be if you bring in a new coach, get assistant coaches around him that can actually help him? If he's never coached- I thought he didn't want them. Yes, that's that's what I've heard. That is exactly what yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I, I heard he didn't want them, and he was very much against them. I don't know if that's because if that was a he thinks he's all good sort of thing or what it was, but I heard yeah he didn't want any help. Yeah, or I think whatever. he thought he believed in the group that he had, like the coaches mm-hmm. that he had, which yeah. are still there now, who have never. But delivered. it's definitely past the point. Out of the media this week, though, who do we? Um, what's the thing that you want to hear from the club? Like, what is the actual thing? Like, this is. Do you want more clarity? Because now it's at a I think point- we need more contact from, from the club. But there's, there's not much contact from actually from the club. It's been a problem for a long you know, time. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from Teague's very bare, limited um, press conferences, that's about all we get. Like we don't get much else. Or, yeah. you know, we get, sorry, Great Southern Bank is signing, whatever. And, you know, um, Andy Lee's, you know, oh. apparently comical videos and whatever. But, Outside and then of that, I guess I, I get that's I get that's important, but we don't really yeah. get much. What you know, do we, we get like out St Kilda, about? St Kilda, St Kilda sent out that email after they got arguably got smashed by 100 points, not 22 or whatever. Yeah. But they their CEO actually literally sent out an email to all the members saying that's not good enough. That's not what we stand for. Whatever. Like I don't know if I'm not getting the emails or what, but I don't really. Yeah, get we don't get any. Of that, that. Do you? I don't uh, really... You only get emails for like the announcement of the sponsor. Some side. yeah, or enter this to win triple yeah. deal, yeah, give away, yeah, or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, that's all I, I give a fuck, just win the game. <laughs> Obviously, up was there any more best moments from the game, as in players wise, Walshy? And was there any for me? For me, as I said in the chat last night, like the goal, Eddie Betts and Jack Silvani's sort of like combined yeah. goal at the start of the fourth, that was an amazing goal, got us back to what 10 points, mm. and as I said last night. 17 other teams would have listed, would lifted after that goal. Yeah. But yeah. we stopped. We didn't Absolutely. kick another goal. Mm. There's, no, there's no passion. We'll one more no, goal. There's fucking nothing. Yeah. Like, like, even when we've won games, like we sing the songs, they're fucking dead. That song's dead. There's no, you know, mm. passion. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's just a fucking joke. No passion, now. no pride. Moving on to the worst, worst moments. And I know there's a lot of stuff off field. But if there's anything that you found new from yesterday's game that was just what? Was there anything <laughs> like that, boys? But yeah. like, was well, this any- is not new. This is not new, but I mean, just I, you had a bit more on this, Jack. But um, when the game was in the balance against the Pies, three quarter time, we're down by nine points, we kicked one goal in the fourth, and obviously we lose. Um, versus Dogs, we're actually up by over two goals, like 14 points. We kick one goal in the fourth and lose. Um, then against the Swans, three quarter time, we're only down by three. You know, we've never been out of these games. Yeah. Then we kick one go in the fourth, and we all know what happened. So, why is that, Jack? I, mean, I know you have a bit more to add on that. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I've just focused on the last two weeks. I mean, the last week's been very disappointing, both 22 point losses. And it's yeah. just like the first half, we've only been outscored by seven points combined across the, the last two games. But then we've been outscored, uh, what's that, 13 goals to seven after half time in the last two games. Like, that's yeah. an issue. Like, is Teague just not, I don't, I don't know if it's just Teague or if it's anything, like, they're just not getting enough, like, revved up enough at half time. Because that's, that is an issue, being outscored by, you know, six goals in a half of football yeah. each week. I don't know how the coaches are letting it happen. Every week. Uh, yeah, oh, that's the thing. I've never I seen, know. like, I know we've been shit for a long time, right? But that's like, the un- that's a problem that's really raised this year. Like, how do you not change something? You see it at local fucking level. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. You know, so, something's not right. Structure's not right. Change something. Mm. Yeah. We need to change. Oh, I just don't know. I don't know. So, but it's just frustrating me every day. And then I reckon, I reckon that also has, because people are mentioning it like, but that's all tea. That's all tea. Like, he's the guy who goes out there to change the magnets. So, mm. I mean, yeah, people are saying, well, I, I personally don't reckon think it's T's fault. But game no. on the line, change something, mate. Like, Ed Kono on the halfback yeah. fight. What the fuck, man? He should not be you playing. Was good. Not in the midfield. Uh, do you, I don't know if... Yeah, I don't know if it was on his own accord, but down... Uh, Having Teague down obviously didn't make much difference in the end, but down at the sidelines, like that was sort of, I thought it was good to see. Do you reckon that was of his own accord, or do you reckon he? I mean, did you guys not, look into that too much? Or? I'm not sold on going on the sideline, to be honest. Yeah. Because how the fuck is he going to fix the structure if he's? Oh, you the... get your message out a lot more. Yeah, you don't see as much probably. That's probably fair. That's what I think. Like it's just. Oh, yeah. It's a... well, that's the. That's the. That's... You may as well go over Zoom, mate. Yeah. Seriously. But then that's <laughs> the. That's the that's the assistant's and runner's job to go out there and give the message out from the guy up top. He doesn't. He shouldn't. Yeah. Be, I mean, I mean, realistically, there are coaches that do that from the side, like John. Uh, I think Longmire and Ratton. Longmire. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Bain, there are coaches who do it. Yeah, but hmm. I mean, if you the like, it shouldn't be his problem. That's the assistant fucking coach's problem. They should be the yeah. ones who Teague says, "Oi, change this." And connect it to the runners so they can go out and tell the players. It shouldn't be a team. Yeah, absolutely. It shouldn't be up to team. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's right. The one who's upstairs saying, yeah, I mean, of course it's up to team telling the thing, but he shouldn't be downstairs. They've got other yeah, people exactly. like John yeah. Barker. What the f- Yeah. <laughs> John Barker. Um, I've got a question. And <laughs> I know Jack's a little bit biased here because he, because he loves him, but have we learned the value or has your perceptions changed on Lockie Plowman at all? Like, I don't know. I feel like we could have used him, but what do you guys reckon? Yeah, Liam Ryan kicked four. Awesome. Stocker, yeah. What do you reckon? What the fuck are we putting Stocker on him for? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. It's so bad. Yeah. It's, it's becoming a joke, man. It's almost as bad as... And the worst part is you get a job for that now. Yeah. The worst part is you get a job for that now. I don't think he played that bad, Stocker. Like, he just shouldn't have been playing on his 60 touches at 94%. At 94%, 94% was not bad. <laughs> He's in play the fucking middle. Play the middle. Yeah. <laughs> right. but, uh, when, just, if he gets, he gets dropped, he I feel like, I feel like they, I feel week by week they actually yeah. come out this club. They come out with other stuff to piss us fucking off. I don't know why they do it. But have you noticed that? Every time they, they have a meeting stuff, every week. Just it's something it different. Yeah. How can we piss them off? Even more? <laughs> they get a young guy in, and then not and wing position is probably the least pressure really. Manning up. It's like it's yeah. not a big position to like. It's not so structure. You run it up and down. It's more free. Like Essendon, they've got three young fellas. I heard last night they were saying they just play positions and they just let them go. The coaches let them go, do whatever they want to do. Yeah, we've got fucking young guys yeah. like Stocker and Liam Ryan. Oh, what the <laughs> fuck? It's so bad for yeah. stock. Oh. Like, you get me? Like, it's just yeah. oh. you know because oh, I know I'm, exactly I'm, what you're saying. Yeah, because yeah. we spoke oh, about yeah. it last night. I mean, but the kids aren't in like the kids aren't in there to have a massive lockdown role. They're not. Mm. Like they're, no. like, they're not. They shouldn't. Yeah. They shouldn't. Like a kid like Liam Stocker, he's like he's twenty. No, he's twenty one. He's a twenty. Trying to break his way into the team, I think as well. He's trying to break his way into the team. We'll go. We'll chuck you on Liam Ryan, who's yeah. You know, and then as for said, fun, it's yeah. yeah. But then as you said, now he'll probably get dropped because he let Liam. Ryan, it's not his job. Yeah. It's not his job. He's 21. Out of worst moments. So was there anything else that really stood out from that game? For, for me, there was one time on, well, I think it was, I don't know, the second or third quarter, but Murphy had a contest. It was him and Walshy, I think, or it was him or Cribbles, regardless. And there was a contest. Both of them went for the ball. Then... Murphy pulled out in the West Coast player. I can't remember who it was. Yeah. He just ran and picked up the ball. I was like, that's what Murphy should have done, but he he stopped. Like, I think that just summed up the game pretty much. Well, off the back of that dismal performance against West Coast, it's much anticipated this part of the show. Time for Speak Up Speechly. Certainly is. So we're kind of 
touched on a little bit already, but mostly I just wanted to talk about, you know, passion and pride in the jumper and just pride in playing for the Carlton Football Club. Because as I sort of said, like, there's just no pride in the jumper. Like, even the, the board, I think, at, at the moment, like, there we go, Pato, we love it. That's what we need to play for, the, the monogram on the front. But even the board at the moment, like, I don't really think, like, there's much sort of, like, love for the Carlton Football Club. Like, I think, like, it's a lot of just, oh, yeah, we're here to make money and sort of spruiking about, like, getting out of debt and this sort of shit. And it is just a little bit frustrating. I want to, what are your thoughts on, on the board sort of not really, really understanding the culture of the football club? Yeah, I think, well, yeah, it is seen more. A lot of clubs are these days, I guess, seen more as a business and an organisation and a way to make money and how to profit from it opposed to what it is as a football team at the end of the day. Uh, you know, what was one of the best football teams and, you know, one of the most proud football teams is, yeah, a bit of a rabble at the moment. So I do, yeah, I understand what you're saying there. And I, yeah, do agree. Daph? And then, yeah. And, uh, right. um, <laughs> I've heard a lot of people talk about, is there too many business people on the board? Well, I think other than Lagutache, who is the leaving, who's leaving as president this year, at the end of the year, mm-hmm. Um, he's a Carlton man, like he's actually Carlton through and through. Like he's probably a supporter, but the rest of them are just business people. Is that a problem? Yeah. You reckon that's a problem? I think personally, you need a good mix. Like you need business people, yeah. obviously, because as Sam said, it is a business. But you also need people that bleed the football club, that you know, know what it's like to be a fan. Because I think at the moment, us fans are getting left behind. And it's, it is honestly frustrating as a supporter and as a paying member that the club it really seems that they really couldn't give two shits about what, like what we want at the moment. Like it, it is very, very frustrating. I don't know if you guys feel the same at all. Or... Yeah, they are welcoming. Like, I think like, obviously some past players. You got you got Simo. What's he? I mean, is he defense coach for the BFL or assistant? Whatever he is. Um, then Cruz is obviously right coach for us, and they are welcome, they are welcoming some. I guess past players back, but like, you know, Kruder, like, you know, what harm would he have done, you know, just walking him back in? Like, what harm is there in taking a bit of a punt? Like, you know, obviously Judd's leaving Feb as well. well. Feb, yeah, probably probably one of the bigger ones that people have called, have cried, you know, to come back to the club. Um, yeah, it would have helped out. I mean, Harry's going right now, but, well, actually, yeah, I mean, it probably wouldn't be that bad because if you look at, and I'm not going to take anything away from Harry because he's obviously going very well, but it, I don't know the exact stats, but if when he's actually kicking a drop punt, his stats are pretty bad. Like, it wouldn't hurt just to get Feb in there and, you know, maybe sort of help him out a bit with that sort of area. Because if we, when if he can't actually snap it, like, he's actually not much chance of kicking the goal. And, you know, it, which he, there is, you know, certain aspects he needs to fix of his game. And because that could be said about all players, I guess, um, for us. So, yeah, it wouldn't hurt getting past players back like Fev and all that sort of stuff. What do you reckon about that? 100%. Yeah, because I think I mentioned it in the fir- in our first episode about trying to get um, Fev through the door to help Harry. And, I mean, at the time, it was like, you boys were a bit like, well, Harry's leading the column, but it's like, yeah, but as you said, Sam, he kind of only, like, I mean, I've kind of seen it from the start, but he only really snaps, like, I don't feel confident when he goes for a drop punt. Which isn't, no, neither. which isn't right. What you want in a football in a forward? Yeah, but it isn't right for a Coleman medal leader. How many how yeah. many set shots has he kicked as a drop punt this year? I wouldn't even know. They, I said, they, they, said, they did say it on the weekend. Because uh, I know he has kicked a few. Like I think I think he's gotten better from last year. I think we forget like he did. Yeah, lose oh, yeah, no, like like he's progressing, but oh, he's definitely yeah. better. I remember mm-hmm. watching him in the VFL and like he's put on a lot of size and he's far far from the player he was a few years back. But um, there's still certain aspects that he does need to fix, obviously. Like that drop punt. If you're a forward and you can't kick a drop punt, like that would have been laughable 15, 20 years ago. You know, mm-hmm. someone playing yep. in the forward. Imagine, imagine Coventry, imagine Dunstall, imagine Fev, if they couldn't kick a drop punt, you know, um, they'd be last out of the club almost. Yep. But yeah, like I definitely think, and don't, but he's, he's, you know, he's sat, you know, Snapping at the ball, whatever like, that is all very good, but I mean, there is certain aspects he needs to fix 100%. Okay. No, because what I was about to touch on earlier about the whole board and the whole board situation and stuff, 
But um, <clears throat> but isn't the main goal of a football club to win games? Like, you would think so. But you would think so. I mean, of course, it's great yeah. what they're doing off field. They're getting sponsors. I mean, it's great that they signed up with Puma a couple of years, uh, start of 2020. Awesome stuff about that with the bank. Awesome stuff with how they're now how, how they're not um in depth anymore. But isn't the main like isn't the main goal to win a premiership? I don't know if that's yeah. just me, but you would think a football club, any sporting organization, is success. And that's how you get fans. Yep. Yeah, I think it. actually Tez, I believe Tez might have said it. Um Blue Broad, shout out again. Um about, I think it was clause three or something. It was quite far down. In terms of, they had something about winning a premiership, but they had, you know, all these other things that they wanted to achieve sort of in front of it. But yeah, I agree. Like the premiership is, it's why you play. Um, you know, all the, you know, the Coleman medal is good. The, all the other medals are, and the individual accolades are good. But end of the day, everyone, you know, you play to win a premiership. That's what you want. That's the main goal. That's what you want to do. Um, I know me yeah, as a fan, I, I fucking want to see a premiership. Yeah. Like surely the club, like that's what I was saying before about like the club not really caring that much about its fans at the moment. Like the fact that a premiership, winning a premiership, isn't that high on their agenda. Exactly. I don't know. That'd be that's number one for me. Just win a flag. But but it should be number one on every know. single board member, every single person who runs. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know. Exactly. It's like Richmond, the Richmond, the one flags. Look at all their members they have. Yep. Look at the money they're making. It yep. all, it's, it's exactly all right. Cake. All connected. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I've never dreamed. Like, I, I'd obviously dream of a cart winning premiership flag, but the dream's not real, really. Yeah. Like, it's not. It's yeah. been so bad for so long. Plan. It's been bad for so long that you can't even dare to dream. No. Yeah. Really, you can't. It's going to lead disappointment. You, you do get let down. You get let down. Like, I know we're all pretty positive and uh, we go into each game believing we can win, especially when it's you know, West Coast Reserves, we go into every game believing we can win and then we can make it so much worse at the end when we do lose. Like, it just makes it, you know, hurt that bit more um, because we go in believing, you know, all the hype. And I'm not sure if it's a club or if it's because we're one of the big, one of the big teams, you know, in Melbourne and um, one of the first teams, obviously. But there's always so much hype into our season, you know, all the players we're getting in and, you know, it's what Steven Silvani obviously isn't there anymore, but what he's doing for the club and all the players that are coming in, we go into each game with so much hype and then we just get let down, you know, most of the time, which makes it so much worse. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. completely agree with what you're saying. I think we need to stop with the expectations. I think all of us do. I think just yep. for our mental health, really. Um, yeah. for the rest, I'm not going to go into a game thinking we're going to win. Um, I'm going to think we're going to lose every game. Seriously, like Thank obviously, I, I don't want to think like that. I want like, obviously, I think we'll win, like we can win, but it's just to get to the point where you got you got guys going, you know, nuts on fan cams. I feel sorry for those people. You know what I mean? They're probably yeah. going every day like their whole week is based on if Carlton have won or not. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, exactly. all of us had those weeks where we, you know, we're so passionate and we let get let down, and their whole week shit. But you know also, I mean? they have lived through it for like so many years as well. I mean, like. But Us boys, we haven't really been a lot like around for a long exactly. time. Exactly. Let's be real. Like, what I was going to say, it's been hard for on us because we moment. weren't alive in 95 and all that. Mm. We didn't see all these players playing their prime. Like, you know, Kuda, yeah. Jasmine Cody, probably going a bit, back a bit further. Um, obviously, Bradles, we saw it a little bit because he played for 100 years. But, um, yeah, like, we didn't see all that success. We didn't, you know, we haven't seen anything. You know, I was born in 2000. I think you guys are a little bit after it. But, you know, our, our best thing we've got to hold on to is, you know, beating what, Richmond in 2013. Like, we haven't, we have, we've never seen success. So it's all, it's all we know. Supporting football is all, all we know is, you know, best, you know, failure. So uh, it hurts, but yeah, we don't know any difference. Time, <laughs> time is uh, very much getting away from us. But, um, but before, so, I mean, obviously with our next episode, which will come out later on in the week, uh, will be our mid season. Um, review of how we've gone halfway through the season, but I just want a quick one from each of you of what is the main thing we will touch it on. We will touch on it in a bit more um, depth in the mid-season review, but um, what is the main thing that you want to see out of this club in the next 10 rounds? Dave, you can start us off. Wow. Uh, I'm just what's, a bit what's, the, what's the main thing? 
Just a bit of pride. Um, I don't see us. Why people, you know, oh, we can beat Geelong. We've got a tough, like, we've got some tough games, man. Um, I'm not sure anymore. Um, just pride in the jumper. Just go all out every week. If you lose the game, you lose the game. It's just the way we've been losing the game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just the way we've been losing. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, that's, that's the way. Just more respect on the fucking jumper. More respect for the fans. Sam? You know what I see happening? So we've lost, you know, we haven't beaten a team in the top eight. We're, what, 12 rounds in, basically 13 round, rounds in or whatever. we the buy next week. Um, I see this, I'm not sure of our exact draw in the latter part of the year, but, I mean, assuming we've played a lot of the teams in the top eight, we're going to have a few easy, not easy teams, but a few lesser teams to beat. And we'll, we'll win our last few games or a lot of our last few games. And there's the hype again, all the hype we built back up because teams won four games in a row. Colton, 2022 premiers, here it comes and all that. Um, and then we'll go out there and we'll lose to Richmond by six goals next year. Um, so it's the same thing. It just goes around and around and around. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to... I, I want to see pride in the jumper, exactly, but I want to see convincing wins against, you know, lower teams and actually go out there and fucking win some games. It's a bit of a joke. Yeah. Jack? <coughs> I mean, you probably said it, the pride in the jumper. There's not really much else we can really get out of the season, really. I mean, I guess hopefully we can buy into one sort of direction. I think that's what I want to see. And I do want to see some younger guys get games. Like Kemp, when he's, you know, got a few more twos games under his belt, you know, Ramsey, Honey, yeah. these sort of guys. I want to see them playing. Like we've got nothing to play for. What? Why does it matter? Yeah. I reckon the main thing, going forward is what I would like to see is just playing the kids, playing the kids, just get some kids out there. I, I believe, cause I mean, I'm very optimistic about this club would never ever stop supporting this club. Even if they lose fucking every week, like they fucking do. The main thing in the club Good. song is Been a whole we, we are the team that never lets you down. And they let oh, us change it like every change it fucking week. Every fucking week. They come out, they come out out of the race. Da da da. And it's just like and they and you hear we are the team that never lets you down. I'm like, well, you let me down last well, week, so <laughs> the last 20 years. Yep. So we go, anyway. boys. We've changed we've recommended about 30 changes here in a span of 30 minutes. We've, we're getting rid of everyone. Yeah. Um, anything else to add or like it. I reckon that's all done. But um, we'll be here all day. It's all good. Yeah, <laughs> we, we can literally be here all day talking about these fucking burgers. But um, yeah. So we will we will be once again. We'll uh, post another video throughout the week with um mid season review. But um, once again, your boys have been terrific. Once again, good to be here. You as well, mate. And uh, stay safe, everyone. Yes, yeah, stay safe. I don't think I'll go on another rant about the lockdown. I think everyone knows what the deal is. Um. But as always, hope you, hope you guys stay safe and we will always want to bring out more content to put a smile on your face and make your week just a little bit brighter. But um, and as always, well, they fucking piss us off, but as always, go the Mighty Blues. Go the Blues. Blues. Bangers.